Regular viewers of this channel will know that we've looked at cryo cooling technology a couple of times now. First, we use it to get 6 gigahertz on a Comet Lake system, and most recently, we used it to get 5.6 gigahertz on a Rocket Lake system. Setting up cryo cooling is not as straightforward as setting up a regular custom loop water cooling system. Hence why the videos where we detail the configurations are about one hour long. One recurring challenge with the cryo cooling is that the Peltier inside the EK Quantum X Delta Tech dumps a bunch of heat in the water loop that is generally not accounted for by traditional fan configurations. The Intel cryo cooling technology has two modes of operation, except for standby, of course cryo mode and unregulated mode. In cryo mode, the Peltier element inside the Delta Tech water block is only switched on when it's required and is switched off when not required. This greatly reduces the overall power consumed as the tech is not running at full power all the time. The Intel software then regulates the cooler temperature by assessing the humidity in the room as well as the CPU temperature. Based on these inputs, the software ensures that maximum cooling is provided at any time while also ensuring the temperature does not drop below the dew point. This is to avoid any risk of condensation. This mode is indicated by a green icon in the desktop tray and a green LED on the tech controller. In unregulated mode, the Peltier inside the Delta Tech is turned on to full power all the time. As a result, the Delta Tech cools well below ambient temperature. In this mode, there will be condensation risk on the heatsink surfaces and surroundings due to the lower than ambient temperature. This mode is indicated by a white icon in the desktop tray and a purple LED on the tech controller. In either mode, the hot side of the Peltier element is cooled by the water block. So any of the additional heat that it produces will be dumped in the water loop. In a traditional system, the system fans are mapped against the CPU temperature. So when the CPU temperature increases when you load up a game or any other workload, the fan speed uh, RPM will increase to ensure that the system is cooled at all times. In custom loop water cooling systems, we do not use the fans to cool the CPU directly. Instead, we use water to transport the heat generated by the CPU away from the CPU to the radiator, and then cool the radiator with our system fans. Here is the problem. When we set the cryo cooling to unregulated mode, the CPU temperature will be exceptionally low in idle. Therefore, the radiator fans will not spin up and thus the radiator will not be actively cooled. However, in unregulated mode, the tech is working at full power and must be actively cooled. In our case, the Delta Tech adds about 200 watt of load in the water loop. So this creates a problem. On the one hand, we are adding heat in the loop because of unregulated mode. And on the other hand, the fans are not spinning up also because of unregulated mode. The result is that, if you're not careful, the water temperature will increase too much and result in a less than comfortable situation. To illustrate the problem, we set up a very simple test. We put back together our 5.6 GHz Rocket Lake system featuring the Core i9-11900K, Asus ROG Maximus 13 Apex motherboard and EK Quantum X Delta Tech water block. We enable XMP, ABT and MCE and go into the operating system. We set the cryo cooler to unregulated mode and track the CPU temperature, water temperature and fan speed while idling in the operating system. We can very clearly see the issue from the data. When enabling unregulated mode, the water temperature quickly increases from 30 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius in less than seven minutes. The temperature keeps increasing to 62 degrees Celsius after 20 minutes, even when just idling in the operating system. However, all this time, the fans do not spin up at all because the CPU temperature is too low. We also tried the same test with cryo mode. The situation is slightly different since cryo mode only enables the Peltier when the cooler is above the dew point. So when sitting idle, that means the Peltier is not on most of the time. While the result is much less dramatic than that of unregulated mode, we also clearly see the water temperature increasing from 33 to 45 degrees Celsius. Again, the increase in water temperature is not counteracted by an increase in fan speed. The solution that I've been using so far is to configure the Asus QFAN chassis fan 2 to follow the T sensor. I then attach a temperature sensor to the header on the motherboard, as well as put the sensor in the water loop. This ensures that the radiator fans follow the actual water temperature increase 
uh, monitored by the T sensor. With the Q fan configured to increase the fan speed according to the water temperature, we see there are no more overheating issues. The water temperature remains stable at around 34 degrees Celsius, keeping the CPU around 10 degrees Celsius with the fans spinning at about 1600 RPM. Of course, the Asus Q fan configuration is a great solution, but there are some caveats. One, not all motherboards have an onboard temperature sensor header. Without the temperature input, we cannot have the fans spin up when needed. Two, not everyone has an Asus motherboard, so the solution will be different with other motherboard brands. Three, you must always remember to configure the QFAN after a BIOS reset or flash. Some people, me included, can be a bit forgetful. Four, it also requires you to have full trust in the BIOS configuration actually behaving according to the settings you have configured. A more general solution to our problem is the Elmo Labs EFC. EFC stands for Easy Fan Controller. It is a straightforward PCB with three fan headers rated up to 10 amps in total. It has a PCIe power connector. It has a header for an external temperature sensor. And it also has a header for the uh, I2C connection. On board the PCB, there's also another internal temperature sensor. The purpose of the EFC is very straightforward map your fan curve against a specific temperature input. Setting up the EFC is also pretty straightforward. Simply plug the fans into the fan headers, the power into the power connector, and if you're using an external temperature sensor, plug that into the temperature sensor header. Then use the button to navigate through the configuration menu. Short pressing the button once allows you to select between the three menu items, fixed, low, and high. Fixed lets you set a fixed fan duty cycle setting, and low high lets you configure a lower and upper ceiling for the temperature controlled fan curve. As you cycle through the menu items, you will find the upper LED to go from least bright to most bright in three steps. This indicates which item is currently selected. Lowest brightness is fixed, medium brightness is low, and maximum brightness is high. Long pressing the button after selecting one of the three menu items allows you to choose one of the three options for each menu item. Fixed can be set to 30%, 60%, or 100% fan duty cycle. Low can be set to 25, 30, or 35 degrees Celsius. And high can be set to 40, 50, or 60 degrees Celsius. As you cycle through the options, you will see the lower LED go from least to most bright, indicating which option is currently selected. After selecting the options, you don't have to do anything to apply the setting. It just does it by itself. When you set a low and high point, the EFC will complete the fan curve using a linear function. So in total, the EFC supports nine different fan curves mapped to a temperature sensor and three fixed fan curves. In our case, we want the lowest fan curve mapped against the water temperature. So short press twice to select low, long press once to go to the options, leave the option 25 selected, long press to return to the menu items, short press twice to select high, long press once to go to the options, leave the option 40 selected. And that's it. We performed the same tests like before and tried three different configurations. First, uh, the temperature controlled fan curve set with low high to 25, 40. Uh, two temperature controlled fan curve with the low high set to 35, 60, and then the fixed duty cycle set to 100%. When configuring the Elmore Labs ESC to temperature controlled fan curve with low high points set to 25 and 40 degrees Celsius, we see that the water temperature remains stable at around 35 degrees Celsius with a fan speed of 2100 RPM. When configuring the Elmore Labs EFC, to temperature controlled fan curve with low high points set to 35 and 60 degrees Celsius, we see that the water temperature remains stable at around 43 degrees Celsius with a fan speed of 1200 RPM. When configuring the Elmore Labs ESC to fixed fan duty cycle of 100%, we see that the water temperature remains stable at around 33 degrees Celsius with a fan speed of 2800 RPM. 
at the end of the day, each of these configurations really is a set and forget kind of a thing. And it just boils down to what kind of a fan RPM you want or what kind of a water temperature you're comfortable with. The Elmore Labs EFC can also be connected to the Elmore Labs EVC2 to extend its functionality. The Elmore Labs EVC2 aims to enable DIY users to get more out of their computer parts. Its main focus is enabling digital or analog voltage control using I2C, SMBus, or PMBus. But the device also has UART and SPI functionality. There are three variants of the EVC2. The original EVC2, the EVC2S, and the EVC2SX. Only the latter is still available, while the former two are discontinued. Elmo Labs is founded by former ASUS ROG motherboard engineer and extreme overclocker extraordinaire Elmore. The EVC journey started in 2014 with a hobby project and a little device that provided an I2C bus, a USB interface, and a software interface so users could gain control over any I2C voltage controller on their motherboard or graphics card. Hobby turned business in 2018 when Elmore Labs Limited was founded in Taipei, Taiwan. Since then, Elmer Labs has launched a couple of interesting products for the PC, DIY enthusiast, and extreme overclocker customer, including, of course, the EVC2 and EFC, but also a P80DB2 LPC debug card, an ample power card, the KTH K-type thermometer, a power limit modifier adjustable shunt resistor, an HOT heater controller, and most recently, the NVB3S GPU interconnect bridge, for NVIDIA Ampere graphics cards. The EVC2 can be considered somewhat as the foundation of the Elmore Labs ecosystem, as it allows you to connect many of the Elmore Labs products to expand their functionality. For example, I can connect the EFC to the EVC2 and turn the Easy Fan Controller in somewhat more of an advanced fan controller. I can do monitoring and logging of data, I can configure the fan curves fully manual, and so on. To do all this, first connect the EFC to the EVC using the I2C header. Then connect the EVC2 device to a USB port on your motherboard. Now, download the EVC2 software from the Elmore Labs website. Next, open the software and select the I2C bus connected to the EFC. In my case, that's I2C1. Click on Find Devices and the Elmore Labs EFC should be detected automatically. Navigate to the Elmore Labs EFC item in the menu. Now you have access to all the extended functionality of the EFC. To enable monitoring, simply check monitoring in the software. The extended functionality includes switching between fixed mode and temperature control mode, enabling fan stop, changing the temperature source between the internal and external sensor, adjusting the fixed fan duty from 0% to 100%, in 0.625% intervals, adjusting the temperature control parameters, low and high temperature from 10C to 60C in 0.1C intervals, low and high fan duty cycle from 0% to 100% in 0.625% intervals, switching between different types of temperature sensors, store a custom configuration to the device which will be loaded on power up, monitoring and logging of both internal and external temperatures, monitoring and logging of each fan speed, monitoring and logging of the fan duty cycle. To enable data logging, right-click on any of the graphs that you would like to log the data of and select Add to Data Logger. Navigate to the Home menu and click Data Logger. Ensure that the data points you want to log are selected. Click File and select a folder where you want to save the data log then click Start Logging. The data logger creates a simple CSV file that you can import into, for example, Excel and make your charts. All right, some final words. Actually, there's not that much to say about the Elmo Labs ESC other than the fact that I'll be using this one in any future systems that require temperature controlled fan behavior. The fact that you can so easily change and manipulate the fan curves using a single button makes it a set and forget kind of a tool, and that's ideal for my use case. For water cooling enthusiasts who would like to use the Elmo Labs EFC in their system, I would highly recommend you to use the external temperature sensor and then map the water temperature 
to the fan curve with low 25 degrees Celsius and high at uh, 40 degrees Celsius. That will ensure that your water temperature is always somewhere in between 25 and 40 degrees uh, Celsius. For people that want to use it inside a chassis, maybe with air coolers or with AIO coolers, probably you can get away with using the internal temperature sensor and then set the low high to 35 degrees, uh, degrees Celsius and 60 degrees Celsius. I haven't actually tried this myself, so if you're using the Elmore Labs EFC inside a chassis, please let me know what's your ideal configuration. In terms of availability, I think this product will be available soon on the Elmore Labs website at a price point around $20 to $30. Most of the Elmore Labs products are priced fairly reasonable. So if you want to know if it's available or not, go check out the, uh, the, the website. If you want to learn more about Elmo Labs and the products, you can also connect through the Discord, a newsletter, there's a forum. I mean, you'll, you'll find what to do on the internet, right? All right, that's it for this video. I wish you a very pleasant day and till the next time.